Well, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is Word of the Cross Ministries. This is our Wednesday night Bible study. We are so glad you're here. We're glad you stopped by to join us. And we are certainly glad that you've tuned in by social media. We want to ask you to do a few things. Number one, hit like. Two, hit subscribe. But most of all, why don't you hit share right now? Share this um, message because it's going to be something to change not only your life, but those listening. You know, the world is in need of, of a touch from God. The world is in need of God. I didn't tell you we need more money for Christmas. I didn't tell you that That's right. the world needs more, you know, the right social economic group even. And that we don't need more Republicans. We don't need more Democrats. What we need is a move of God. And let me tell you, God is moving wherever the cross of Christ is being preached and believed in. That's right. Talk about it. And let me tell you something about the message of the cross. You don't even have an opportunity to believe it unless you first heard it. How should they hear unless there's a preacher? And how should they believe unless they've heard it? See, God is so simple when we overlook it. But you need the message of the cross to come across your ears, and not just any message, because there's so many counterfeit uh, wannabe messages. See, it's one thing to say the cross, but it's another thing to preach the cross of Christ. And with the help of the Holy Spirit and our commitment to not deviate, we pray that this message of the cross will come forth, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, and it will hit your ear gates, and you will then have something to believe on to take you to another plateau in your life that's needed and to get you out of the miry clay. That's what the cross does. You know what it does? It does the exact same thing Jesus did when he walked the earth. See, Jesus said, these works shall you do it greater because I'm going to be with the Father. Him going to be with the Father set in motion part two. And part two is, is, is only activated through the preaching of the gospel. That's where every true revival starts from, whether it's in your home, in your church, or in your life. It starts with the preaching of the cross. So why don't you just open up your heart with us as we go into prayer here, and my wife will end up singing a song, and we're going to get into the Word. And we ask you to open your heart. See, God only moves on a willing heart. He's not going to come through this camera or come across this pulpit and force you into submission. It's a willingness in this walk. See, we are not debtors to live after the flesh. We are debtors, but not to live after the flesh. We are indebted to Christ, but it's a debtor by choice. That's right. Because he cut us free to do what we want, but we should come back to him in allegiance and say thank you. To whom that is forgiven of much, love as much. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. I like that old school master, the devil. And, and he, he was a slave driver. Amen. But we thank God. Let's begin to pray this morning or this evening before we walk fully into our service. And we just want to let the Lord know we need him. We rely on him today because there's nothing I can give you. There's nothing any man can give you. And let me tell you, a lot of us have went to psychologist couches. A lot of us have went to schools of deeper thought to try to get out of our dilemma. But let me tell you something. The only one that can help man in his ailments, the only one, is Jesus Christ. See, that's God's answer. Man has an answer, and it usually costs money. But it doesn't have to, but it's still a lie. But let me tell you, God has one answer. He didn't give us multiple choices. Pick like Baskin Robbins, multiple flavors. No, he gave us one answer, and it was the best heaven had to offer. It was God himself by the name of Jesus Christ, and it all fulfilled itself through that death on the cross. So let's pray as we give our understanding over to him as he reveals his cross to us today. Father, we just thank you right now by the authority in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for who you are and what you have already done. We thank you, Lord, for moving by your spirit, hallelujah, in, in the sanctuary, Lord. We thank you for being such a mighty God, hallelujah, in the midst of your people. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we don't have anything we can do. Lord, we have nothing to give. Silver and gold have I none, but that which I do have, I'm giving unto you, Lord. And, Father, we just thank you, Father, that 
that you've given this revelation of your son, Lord, the only thing man needs, but it's more than enough. It's exceedingly abundantly above everything that we can even ask or think is all tied in Calvary. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for revealing it. Lord, that way we can eat it, digest it, and believe in it. Help us today, Lord. We need you. This is a wasted time without your touch. But we thank you that your touch, hallelujah, will be here today because, hallelujah, we're relying on you, Lord, not on the arm of the flesh in skill sets and abilities. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for everybody watching and listening, Lord, that have pushed away from other things maybe they could be doing. Lord, give them a touch today, Lord, in their inner man. Lord, we speak, but you reveal it, Lord, to the inner man. Hallelujah. Comparing spiritual things to spiritual, Lord, do a work. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise. And everybody said amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Nick, you have a something on your heart? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus.
We are looking at a couple other locations to move to. Um, and as you see, for those watching, this is the reason why, because the, and one of the reasons is the internet here with the government, man. Government internet, what, do you, what can you do? We don't have an <laughs> IT we can turn to, you just gotta accept it. But we're doing our best to keep us uh, online. We had to switch to a cell phone, uh, Wi-Fi. So hey, bear with us. And if it goes out, I just wanna give you an update. Uh, my wife is real good too. We have, always have a backup that has to have a little editing put to it and within a number of days it'll come up. You don't want to hear, miss the word of the Lord. Let me tell you something. I don't care what you got to go through to hear it. You need to hear it. I know when um, I've needed, I don't even, you see this belly here, I don't really deal with uh, not eating too well, okay? Yeah. But let me oh, tell you something. I drive all over the place. <laughs> To get pizza. something good to eat. In fact, I got a guy sitting in the audience right now. He can tear up that CC's pizza. <laughs> and you already know what that's about. But uh, how much more the Word of God, amen? How much more this message of the cross, the only right. message that can take you and fix what's going on because it's Jesus reaching in and touching. We've been talking about, uh, we've got a different speaker today. Brother Jim's going to break this word down. And he's always a treat if you've ever. I've been able to hear Brother Jen, or you get ready, amen? But let me tell you, what we've been talking about is, you know, the book of Romans, the eighth chapter in particular, really shows the introduction of the Holy Spirit into the life of the Christian by way of the law of the Spirit. And and you, you don't have to sit there and meditate on, am I doing the law of the Spirit? Am I doing? If you keep faith in the cross, and you're after the Spirit, after the things of the Spirit, namely the message of this cross. Let me tell you something, if you stay focused on Calvary, there's things that happen, and it's all outlined in that chapter. But namely the Holy Spirit, the same one whose life-giving source in chapter six was referenced when he first was introduced. And then chapter eight, he's showing you the mechanics of how this, how this unfolds. Mm -hmm. He takes shop in your life, he dwells in you. He literally lives in you. Think of that. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is not quickening us. But is it a guarantee? No. It's if. Come on, somebody. Yeah. If. Yeah. Amen. And, and hopefully that if is a fulfilled condition in, in our lives. And yes. if it is, let me tell you something. He'll do whatever you need. If he could speak these worlds, amen, he can raise Jesus from the dead. He could raise up a, a, a broken soul. That's Remember, right. we're talking about Sundays. He heals the broken heart. Mm -hmm. That's right. Glory. And let me tell you what that also speaks. Nobody else can. Mm -hmm. He is the only one Amen. who can heal man's problem. Amen. It's God's answer. This cross is God's answer. Why do you got so cross, cross, cross? Because it's the only, only, only answer. <laughs> that's right. There's nothing else that'll do it. Amen. Nothing else. And that's why Paul said, I'm determined to know nothing right. but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. Right. So we're going to move forward with our offering, and after that, uh, Brother Jen's going to prepare to come on up here. We're getting mic'd up with a uh, uh, with a wireless mic, and um, in fact, we're going to get this to him. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. So we're going to uh, just remind you here at Word of the Cross Ministry, we have um, several. Uh, things we're doing these days. Good to see you, brother. One is um, our Sunday morning Bible study, which is at 11.30. And then, of course, this is what you just tuned into and what you just walked into is our 7 o'clock Wednesday uh, Bible study. And our purpose is so simple in all of what we're doing is to preach the cross. That's mm -hmm. it. Yes. We've determined that there's nothing else worth talking about. Right. But we do some outreaches and we do some things within the community. Uh, now, namely, this Saturday, uh, the 28th is? No. Uh, the, 23rd. the 20, this will be 23rd. the 23rd. Yeah. Uh -huh. The eve of Eve of Christmas. Christmas. We are going to be out on uh, the busy, I think the busiest street in is. Naples, yep. uh, Pine and uh, Airport. Airport. And there's been some political. Uh, you know, rallies and stuff that have been on that same corner. And Brother Jim, the Lord put it on his heart that, I, you know, the Bible says, do the work of an evangelist. 
And that the Holy Ghost does that. It's not man. That's the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. being tugged on. Mm -hmm. But he came up with the thought, let's go. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we want to do it right. We're bringing, uh, my wife just sat down and we thought of a bunch of uh, signs that where we could have some things with the QR code so people can, at the stoplight or whatever, or as it permits, can actually get more information. Where's this message coming from? Right. So that they can hear more. Not to build an empire, because let me tell you, you can throw the net out, it'd be good to get a few, amen. Right. People don't want to hear about the guillotine. But let me tell you, there's some that do. There's setting ducks everywhere, even in you watching in your neck of the woods, somewhere in this country, in this world. You need to tell somebody because there's no other hope. It's it. We can't be waiting. But anyway. We're going to go hell it and put it out there. And as God begins to set a hunger in those that are out there, you know, and I don't want to get too worried because I want to pass this to Brother Jim. But I remember in my own life when somebody came to me, they didn't know that I had been wondering, is there more to life than this? See, you don't know that neighbor and that friend, that person who's going to be going by shopping, what conversation they just left with somebody. You don't know. We don't need to know. We just need to answer the call. Go into this world, preach the gospel. Every creature that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And every creature that believes not shall be damned. We're just told to go. We'll not be Holy Ghost and understand all the workings. Amen. But let me tell you, just from your own experience, you were at a point when you were ready, but your facial expression, you did what does a person hungry look like? We used to say that in sales. Yeah. We had to sell these old impossible things to sell. Everybody was like, are you kidding us? <laughs> but when we would encourage them, we would say, what does a person who wants this product look like? And you know, the, the, whoever raised their hand was the idiot. Because you don't know what they look like. <laughs> because it, the person who gets it, you're thinking, I had no clue right. he was going to get it. And then the next person would be like, I knew he was going to get it, and he didn't get it. Let me tell you something. You don't need to know. You just need to go. Amen? And we're going to go this Saturday. And these things cost money. Some of the things we're getting, some, some amplification to. If you feel led to give toward that work or anything that we're doing for this area, mm -hmm. we encourage you to give. There will be some information on the screen if you give electronically mm -hmm. in here or at home. If you have a cash offering and you are feeling led to give, raise your hand. We'll give you an envelope. And without beating that dead horse, we are going to pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you by the authority in the name of yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you for who you are and what you've done. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for the word of the cross, Lord, that we didn't invent. Lord, man didn't invent it, but it came from heaven, Lord. Before the foundation of the world, you said the lamb was already slain. Lord, this message was already part of heaven before it came to earth. Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for giving us the glory of it, Lord, revealing bits of it in, in, in line upon line and precept upon precept, nuance upon nuance, Lord. You're giving it to us, Lord, and it satisfies. It satisfies the soul. Now, Father, speak today. Lord, prepare every heart, Lord, and thank you for everyone that gave, Lord, and everyone that wants to but can't. Lord, bless their comforts, Lord. Give them the ability to give them seed to the soul, as you said you will do. And we give you the praise in the mighty, magnificent, powerful name of Jesus. And everybody say it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So without further ado, come on up here, Brother Jen. All right. Great intro, by the way. Let me uh, get mic'd up here. Did you hold that Uh, yes, I did. Am I coming through the sound waves? We're running a little bit right now. Okay. You look hot. Are you hot? No. Designing websites ain't as easy as you think. You are, no? I know. Oh yeah, I'm not done it twice. Yeah. yeah, no. Uh, praise the Lord. Am I, am I coming through on the sound or? I'm trying to. Trying to oh, I don't know this song, y'all. We don't have that's amplification. So, okay, yeah, no, it's fine. But it's going sure. through. Is it coming through on social media? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'm allowing out anyways. Y'all be able to hear me. Glad to see y'all. 
Uh, glory to God. Well, I'm excited to be here tonight. Uh, even more excited to uh, have the opportunity to preach the cross. That's you right. know, the Bible says I just can't help but speak, you know. And uh, when this truth is shed abroad in your heart and you start to see it, man, you can't help but tell somebody. And so I'm excited here tonight to share what the Lord's put on my heart. Uh, it's, a, it's a word that we've, you know, heard often and we hear mentioned a lot in many scriptures, but sometimes we just need to slow down and really break down what it is that God's asking or telling us. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about steadfastness right. and being steadfast in the faith. And as I was on the way here, the Lord began to impress on my heart that sometimes we often think that steadfastness is for those titans of the faith. You know, those, those, those pastors, those heads of the church, those deacons, they need to remain steadfast and then everybody else is just sort of following along. But really the call to be steadfast is for every single believer. It's for the day one believer, matter of fact. It's for the hour one believer That's right. to remain steadfast in this truth. And we're going to break down what that means to be steadfast and, you know, where it is that God's called us and likewise where he's called us to remain. But before I begin, I uh, just want to share a little quick word about, you know, just hearing the message and, and how we hear, you know. And uh, there's a scripture, and I don't know the, I'm not really good at yelling the verses or the chapters off the top of my head. But uh, there's a scripture that says, they hearing not with faith, the word profited them nothing. Okay? And um, here's why this is important for us. This is, this is something that even I could testify to uh, in my own walk, even in the message of the cross. Is, you know, there has been services where I'll come in and I'm distracted by whatever it is going on in my situation. As y'all know, my family's personal testimony is a lot of financial struggles and struggles in the last two years. And I'll come in and my mind is just totally swallowed up and entrenched with what's going on in my finances, what's going on at work. Maybe me and Casey had an argument before church and I'm all, my mind's all caught up in that. And the whole time I was there, I could recite to you some of the things Pastor was saying in the pulpit, but my heart really wasn't receiving. You know, you ever heard somebody say like, oh, I received that, like, oh, that was for me. The reason why is you heard something along the way in the message that piqued your interest and now you really dug in with your ears. And you're like, all right, the Lord's trying to speak to me specifically. But I, I'd like to offer you guys that every single message is for you. You know, I heard this when I was in, in Texas uh, at the Determined Camp meeting and just, you know, sharing some time and fellowship with some faithful brethren and sisters. You know, every message is for me. You know, and I, it's okay to say that. You hear a message, you're like, oh, man, the Lord's really got my number. But really, even if it's something you're not necessarily struggling with in that area, it's still for you. You know, because we all have this flesh and we all have this sin nature. And every word that comes forth out of this pulpit that's pointing to Calvary and what he's done on the cross is for you and I. And so, uh, with that being said, when we're listening to the, the words coming out of the pulpit and just the message, I encourage you guys to hear with faith. What does that mean? You're not, you're not just here to check a box. You're not just here to be like, yeah, I could, I could you know, write a three-sentence essay on what he said. It, 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 it's for your heart. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like the Bible says for the preaching of the cross is the power of God to us who are saved. In other words, to us who believe. You know, and when, and when this word's coming out, it, it's got to be, it's coming out and it's being offered to you on a platter, but you still have to do your part to grab a hold of it and eat it. Does yeah, that make sense? You gotta eat it. It, there's a, it's a, it's a, God's pushing forth and he's asking you to receive and how you receive is simply by faith. You know, and so that's, that's something I just want to share because sometimes we could come to church and think, well, it's not working. Well, I'm not really getting anything out of it. It's not because anything's wrong with the message. So as long as the person up here is preaching the cross, it's because we're not hearing with faith. And so I encourage you guys to go look at that scripture. Um, it says, they hearing not with faith, the word profited them nothing, meaning they got nothing out of it. So I encourage you guys to listen with faith. Let's start with prayer. Father, we thank you for this time and fellowship, Lord. We thank you for keeping this ministry going. We thank you for those who have come and stayed, Lord. And we even thank you for those who have come and gone, Lord. We can only ask that you would bring them back. Bring them back to their first love, Lord. Show them their desperate need for this way of righteousness that you've shown us through what your son has done on Calvary, Lord. We ask that you continue to keep those that are standing with us encouraged and just edified in this truth. Let us all love on each other as you've called us to do. But let us understand it only comes as we look to what you've done for us and how you loved us, Lord. We thank you for this truth, and we ask that this word go forth in your way, in your manner, and how you want it to be said, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, steadfastness. Okay, the word steadfast. 
the word steadfast, I'm not going to go with the exact uh, definition right now, but in, in layman's terms, it means to be immovable or planted and settled somewhere, okay? Uh, I'm trying to think of an example. A tree would be considered steadfast. The tree is not going anywhere. It's immovable, okay? Um, something we need to understand is the majority of the Christian body today is really not even in a place to be instructed on steadfastness. Say that again. The majority of the Christian body today is not even really in a position to be taught on steadfastness. Why? Because to be steadfast is to remain, plant, remain planted firmly somewhere. And unless you're in the place you're supposed to be planted, there's really no need to tell you to be steadfast because it's really, you need to go back home and remain steadfast. I'll give you a perfect example. Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to jump there real quick because this helps sort of tie in this point of what I'm trying to say. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, Jesus is talking to the church of Sardis, who, by the way, has a name that they live as, but Jesus is, has a pretty harsh charge for them here. He says, you are dead. And then he says, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. He says, remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. Okay, that word hold fast is another word for being steadfast. That means to go somewhere and stay planted there. If I tell Fabi to go stand in that corner and hold fast or to be steadfast in that corner, that means I'm instructing him to go to that corner and not move from there. Okay? Here's the problem. A lot of the church, and again, when we get up here and say this, we're not saying this with some proud crown on our heads like we think so highly of ourselves. It's a saddening thing. I wish that I could go to any church locally and find people preaching the same message and agreeing with me that the cross is truly afforded at all. But unfortunately, that's just not the age we live in. What did Jesus say? Such in these times shall be like the days of Noah. There was one family holding to the altar in the days of Noah. As pastor says in the pulpit, Noah was a crossman. He was an altar builder. He believed in the sacrificial work of Christ. He was the only family left that believed in that. And they were the only family that got up out of here. So he says, such in these times, it shall be the same like in the days of Noah. So unfortunately, this is where heathens and a, a lot of the church alike stands pertaining to the cross of Christ. They just simply have strayed away from it. They've left their first love. They're, 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 give, they're, be, they're being given an instruction to remember how they first heard and to go back because they're not standing there currently. That's right. So understand, steadfast is for those who are already in the place where they are to remain steadfast. Okay? Let me say that again. Steadfast is only for those in the place that they've been called. If you're in that where art thou position, God's not calling you to stand fast in foolishness. What does that mean? If you're believing something other than the cross, if you're leaning on something other than the cross, if you're trusting in something other than the cross, God's not calling you to remain steadfast. He's calling you back to the place where you can and right. should right. be steadfast. Okay? So that's a little disclaimer there. This is for those that are looking to Calvary. This is for those that have found themselves planted at Calvary. Once you're there, once that's your focus, once that's what you're trusting in, in that moment, you're called to stay there. Here's the sad part. All of the church, and this is not just 95%, all of the church, all of the saved Christian body today has heard the preaching of the cross and said amen to it and believed it and nothing else at some point in their walk. What do I mean by that? Bobby, Regardless of if I was a continuous cross preacher from the moment you got saved, that first day, what did I have to tell you in order for you to get saved? Don't worry, I'm not going to make you answer. I can see his eyes struggling. Oh, no. He's like, what you make me do? <laughs> Somebody, anybody in here could testify to this. Even if, if the minister didn't teach you the cross for daily living, he had to at least tell you that Jesus came, died on the cross, and rose again the third day. Amen? For you to get saved for the forgiveness of your sins. Is, is at, at face value, at its barest level, isn't that what most people would call the gospel? That Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins? And amen. That's Calvary. The problem is people stop right there. But my point is, the preaching of the cross met every heaven-bound believer's ear at some point in their walk. Whether they, whether they still retain their salvation or if they've fallen so far off the cross that they no longer have that salvation. At some point... They encountered this truth and were planted at the cross and believed it. Amen? Amen. This is why when we preach the cross to people and we're met with such harsh, reje harsh rejection, let me slow down. Stand you right found that first, by the way. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. 
This is why when we preach the cross and it's met, met, met with such harsh rejection, it's really such a sad thing because we're really not preaching anything new to anybody. You know, right. if, if you are, and I'm, I'm speaking about specifically to, to Christians who we're basically talking to and encouraging them to, to go back to your first love. It's, it's a first love. They've already been there. You know, this is not a new concept. This is not anything brand new to them. It's just they strayed so far away from that salvation experience, that born again experience of knowing nothing other than Jesus dying on them on the, for, on the cross. Like, they didn't really know all the Bible stories. Maybe they didn't know all the scriptures, but at least they knew Jesus died on the cross for me. At that point, they were determined to know nothing else. That's true. Some minister came along the way and said, yes, brother, it is the cross for salvation, but now that we've covered that, now we need to move on to this. And they've been led off into error. I said it a couple months ago, and I believe the Holy Spirit shared this with me, that most Christians knew more about God the day they got saved than 20, 25 years in false doctrine. That's right. Why? Because in the midst of them knowing thousands of more scriptures in the midst of them hearing thousands of more messages and pr having prayed thousands of more prayers they they've expounded upon the simplicity of christ and in the simplicity of christ lies all the knowledge and wisdom that you and i will ever need just go read colossians chapter one and two it'll tell you it says in whom are all the treasures of wisdom hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom hid in christ it's in the simplicity of who he is and what he's done. Uh, this was the scripture I was talking about in the beginning. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard. So this is this is just sort of to bring an understanding to, you know, you can be in the room with a cross preacher up here, but if you're not believing what they're saying, it's not going to do anything for you. That's right. This is not a force-fed gospel. God That's is right. not forcing this upon anybody. He loves us so much and, and respects our sovereignty, he'll let us deny even this. I mean, we're talking about, and this is something me and Pastor and a couple other brothers have been talking about, the true scale and magnitude of the cross. It, 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 I'm not going to go into too much details, but it, it, I think it's a lot bigger than any of us truly, really grab a hold of. And uh, I, I just want to give you guys a, an analogy. Like, imagine Casey's out running errands all day, and I prepared, you know, a nice bubble bath of chocolate strawberries and cooked her a nice, you know, uh, shrimp Alfredo dinner and bought, you know, a really expensive movie in 4K for her and wanted to take her out on a ferry ride to go watch the sunrise, and she just doesn't even want to partake in it. She says, oh, no, thanks, I'm good. Like, take that and magnify it infinite, infamous, uh, what's the word? Infinitely, <laughs> infinitely higher in God's eyes. Like... Jesus dying on the cross, man, I just encourage you guys to meditate on that alone. Just like who Jesus was to God. I don't think anybody in here can truly say with, 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 with a true heart that you would have sacrificed your own children for somebody that did things against you every single day. I mean, and I'm not just talking about like, like shot in the head and just done. I'm talking about brutally tortured, beaten, and killed for someone that grieved you. This is not just someone that's like treated you right all your life. No, this is an enemy of you. The Bible says we were enemies in our mind. Imagine sacrificing your own only child for an enemy. I mean, it, I look at Isla and it's, it's such a far off thought. It just makes me glorify God and his love all the more. Yes, right. But nonetheless, that analogy about, you know, just having something so precious prepared for us, that is the cross. The Bible says herein is love. Not that we loved him, but that he loved us. Yeah. And he loved us by giving his son for us. In that, it would make sense that this is the only thing God really wants us focusing, worshiping, glorying in. Because he went through all this trouble and, 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 and all this virtue just to get us that, what happened on Calvary. Yes. Only for us to treat that as like a day one thing and move on from it. I mean, it's, it's truly a sad thing. But let's, let's move on to the scriptures. Psalms chapter 78 verse 37. It says, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. That's Psalms chapter 78, verse 37. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. So, really the way you could read this and look at it is, they weren't steadfast in his covenant because their heart wasn't right with them. And this is something that pastors have been bringing out on Sundays, that, you know, the issue between us and this faith is really a heart issue. 
That's you know, right. there's, there's scriptures that show that we could sell half of our heart over to this truth. We could sell 25% of our heart over to this truth. That's but right. there's scriptures that say, Lord, I've given you my whole heart. I'll worship Amen. you with all my heart. There's a totality that God wants from us. Our kids, man, they don't... They, they love us so much, they don't hold anything. Daniela knows this. That those sweet boy, Jaden and Jeremiah, they don't love Daniela with 75% of their heart. They've oh, no. sold their whole heart over to her. I mean, she's everything to them. She's, she's their whole world. You know, our kids are to have their parents' whole heart. It's the design. It's no different with God and his children. You know, we're children in here. I want to say that. We're not employees. We're children of God. We're part of the royal family. We've been adopted because of what Christ has done for us. We've been included in him and in, in his death. And so now when he sees Bobby or Jen or Mahari or Daniela, he sees Jesus. I mean, we're children. And he wants our whole heart. He wants our whole heart. He wants all of us. He wants He wants no hold. hold uh, I don't know how that statement goes. No holds bar. No holds bar. <laughs> he wants no holds bar. He wants us totally sold out to him and what he's offered. You know, and, and he's given us a place for us to love him and to have peace with him and to have fellowship with him. And it's at the cross, y'all. It's yeah, at it the is. cross. No matter how you cut it, it always points back to the cross. But it says, for their heart was not right with him, mm -hmm. neither were they steadfast in his covenant. And really, like I said, not being steadfast in his covenant is really just a symptom or a byproduct right. of their heart not being right with him. Well, how do I get my heart right with God? The Bible says, we with the heart have obeyed that form of doctrine. That's good. Okay? Like that. That's how you get your heart right with God. You obey that form of doctrine. What doctrine? The doctrine that's been called to be preached across all the world and all four corners of the planet, which is the preaching of the cross, Christ crucified. That is the doctrine that is to be presented. If it's another doctrine, that's not the doctrine you're supposed to be obeying from with your heart. But if it is Christ crucified, we obey that from the heart. What, is, what does that mean? I believe. It doesn't mean I can just recite a bunch of scriptures. I can get up here and preach a thousand messages on the cross, and God knows that I don't believe it in my heart. That's, that's, that's the true reality. The, it, 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 God is not looking on the outwardly, fleshly experience. Man, we look on the outward. That's why we judge people so easily, by what we see. But the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. And God's looking upon man's heart. Because guess what? The heart is also the location in which he's doing the work on you. The we, know, we talk about it all the time. But God, we thank that you are the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. What does it mean to obey that form of doctrine? Does that mean I need to just wake up and be a perfect Christian? No. Jesus offered this answer simply in his Gospels. They said, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Or in other words, how do we obey you? He says, this is the work of God, that you might believe in him whom he has sent. Ladies and gentlemen, what was Jesus sent to do for us? He was sent to die. That's it's right. that simple. So to obey from the heart that form of doctrine is to just simply believe in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Not just for salvation, though. You, you walk up to most Christians and you ask them, do you believe Jesus died for you? And they'll amen you till the cows come home. That's but you right. ask them, how do you live free from sin? How do you, how do you experience a, a happy family? How do you experience a peace, even though you're going through financial situations like me and my family? And their answer is going to be something so far off the blood of Jesus, it'll be laughable. They'll be, well, you just, need to, you just need to pray, or you just need to fast, or have you been in your word? I saw a video the other day. A pastor, a minister, he had a woman call, and she said she was suicidal. She was suicidal, uh, uh, contemplating suicide. Her and her mother, actually, strangely enough. And uh, his first answer to her was, well, are you on meds? <laughs> wow. Have you talked to your doctor? And, and this is, these are ministers, self-proclaimed apostles, teachers, preachers, pastors of God, Telling the children of God, I mean his beloved children, to turn to a pill, to turn to a doctor, to turn to this self-help book, to turn to this, to turn to that, to turn to this person, to turn to this word, to that word. All the while, the blood of Jesus is just sitting there in a perfectly packaged boat waiting for them to just partake in it. That's right. It's, it's, it's the saddest story in all of history. Christians, people who are, are, are headed to glory, experiencing torment and just suffering here in this day. Because nobody would just simply tell them that what you experience day one is what you can continue to experience every single day of your life. You don't have to wake up and put no outward expression on to impress the people in the, in the pew. You can actually be experiencing that joy unspeakable and that peace that surpasses understanding. You, you alone, regardless of what everybody else around you is thinking. Simply because you believe and obey from the heart the form of doctrine that was delivered unto you day one as a Christian.
What's doctrine? What is doctrine? I might have you get up here and say that. Okay, can somebody pass in the mic? Because I don't really know how I would really define them. No, not doctrine, just so that we understand the scripture. Doctrine is just teaching. So doctrine is just teaching. So the form of doctrine is the is the is the message of the cross Amen. in any form it takes. So it's like a form, uh, like those of us that have ever worked in a factory. Uh, die and cast, they have forms, mm -hmm. and anything you put in it is the same object, and they make multiple things. Well, the doctrine we use, the form of the doctrine should always be Calvary. Oh, that's good. So whatever words we put in that form, it's going to always point people to Calvary. But he said, obey from the heart that form of doctrine, which is able to deliver you. So, Amen. Yeah, so it don't matter that's if good. it's talking about money, Attitude, marriage, children raising is always the form of doctrine. Amen. Yeah, amen. So in other words, but you have obeyed from the heart that model of Calvary. Amen. That's it. It's the model of Calvary. Calvary in every situation. Listen, everything he just mentioned, everything I just listed off up here, these are just all problems. These are problems that we face every day. Man, day by day, creates new inventions to fix problems, whether it be medicine, whether it be weapons, whether it be self-help. But man is always in search of just creating inventions and solutions for problems that we have. And everything we just listed off are different spiritual problems that we all experience in different times and areas of our life. But here's the thing. No different than our salvation. Our salvation is a problem. God requires righteousness for heaven and to live eternally. And guess what? Father, you and me just ain't righteous. Amen. Pastor, you and me just ain't holy. We don't got what it takes. We don't fulfill the requirements. It's a problem. So what did God offer as the solution to that problem? What did Abraham say? He says, God will provide himself a lamb. God said, hey, I have a solution to your problem. I sent you guys the law just to show you how desperately you need a life raft. Now here it comes. His name is Jesus Christ and what he's about to do for you on Calvary. Talk Amen. But here's the thing. It's not just for that problem. Salvation is every single day. Not you getting saved over and over again. Not you waking up a heathen going to hell and you got to go to heaven. No. It's, I need salvation for my finances. I need salvation for this, this torment that I'm feeling. I'm suicidal. I need salvation. The solution to every problem. That's, that's really what this form of doctrine is. Because we're saying not just the salvation problem. But every single problem is solved by the cross. That's right. Does it mean you're going to sit there? I, I heard somebody accuse me and say, well, you're just telling me to sit down and do nothing. I had a person dealing with a situation with their living quarters, and they, they were going to get put out. And they were like, well, you're just telling me to sit down and do nothing. No, absolutely not. I'm not just telling you to just sit there and do nothing. But guess what? Sometimes this faith will cause you to just sit and be still because the Lord's about to do something. But in most cases, or, or uh, it doesn't matter any degree of percentage, but in some cases... The Lord's going to tell you to do something. And I'd actually argue in most cases, there's going to be a, an unction. Mm -hmm. I love what Pastor said on Sunday. He says, when your heart obeys from the heart, the model of Calvary, there's going to be a reflex. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a reflex. It's just like when you go to the doctor and they hit your knee to see if that knee kicks out. If something ain't, if something ain't kicking with that knee, there's a problem. They're like, okay, we got a nervous system issue. Mm -hmm. So, no different. If you're truly in this model like you think you are, because the Bible says they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from you. Their hearts are far from you. Their hearts are not obeying this form of doctrine. If you're truly obeying from the heart this model of Calvary, there's going to be a reflex every time. That's right. There's going to be a reflex every time. You Let's say you're in a perilous it. situation and you're all fret and anxious and, and, and just depressed on what's going on. Guess what the reflex is going to be? It's going to be joy. It's going to be peace. It, 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 it's just no... Hey, when he... when uh, What's the name? Was it Nebuchadnezzar, the king that uh, threatened to throw them in the furnace? Yep. yep. When he threatened to throw those men in the furnace, those three men in the furnace, what was the reflex of their heart believing in their Savior? I won't serve you. I won't serve you. He says, we're not... They, they were determined. They said, oh, king, we're not careful to answer you in this manner. And I've had to have this in my life. I've had people challenge me on the cross or try to attack me or say, oh, you're just in some sort of cult. I'm in a cult because I believe the blood of Jesus paid it all. Really? Well, this is a cult you need to be a part of. Maybe that's why they killed all his disciples so gruesomely. Because to the world, it seems like a cult. The Bible says, I'll create for me a peculiar people yeah. that are zealous to good works. Guys, we're peculiar to the world. That's you don't right. think my family and friends, they see my situation, the ones who are not marching in this truth, see my situation and what my family's going through right now. 
and we're over here smiling and talking about another kid, and they're just so perplexed by it. You know why? Because they don't, they don't have that peace, you know, regardless of their situation. Their peace is tied into their circumstances. And this is where we got to be careful not to find ourselves, man. When we're always chasing to change the environment, on, we'll very quickly take our eyes off of Calvary. I'm going to say that one more time for the people in the back or the people online. When we're always chasing to fix our environment so we can have a peaceful environment instead of a heart full of peace, yeah. we're always going to find our walk unstable and upside down. And most importantly, in order for me to put my eyes on my environment, in other words, look at the storm, look at the stormy waters, I'm always going to sink every time. Why? Because I took my eyes off the Redeemer. Yeah. I took my eyes off the Redeemer. Uh, boy, you're going to hate me for this. What's the name of the guy that walked on water? Peter. 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 <laughs> Had his eyes on Jesus. Peter. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know all the stories, man. I, I know I know Calvary, though. That's all right. right. You're preaching, bro. Peter. He was walking on water, y'all. Who, who y'all ever seen walk on water? I've never seen one. Mm -hmm. He was walking on water, okay? Who do you have his eyes on? Jesus. The Redeemer. He got to look into his environment and his situation, and guess what happened? He sank. Every time. Every time. Without fail. Without fail. It was, it was a lack of faith. It's no different, y'all. We all got some storm going on right now. If y'all don't got any storm, man, get me in with you. I need to see what you're doing. I need to get a part of that program. Amen? We all got some situation going on. Even the most bona fide cross preachers will tell you. They got things they go through, right? Maybe it's not even a sin problem. Maybe it's, a, it's just a circumstantial problem. But here's the thing. When we start running around trying to get all handyman with our environment or our situation, we'll quickly take our eyes off that Redeemer and we're going to sink every time. Y'all, sometimes the Lord wants you to go through a little bit of a wilderness. Mm -hmm. We need to say that again. I agree. You know, some people, they, 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 they push prosperity and they'll look down on you because you may be going through some situation. Or maybe, you know, you're having bad health and they'll think, well, you're not, you're not serving the Lord like you think you are because he's not fair. Y'all, he'll let you go into the wilderness. What did Job say? He tries me every moment every and visits moment. me every morning. Y'all, he's going to let you run through them storms just to test that faith. The Bible says the trials or the trying of our faith, it's like, it's like being put on stand like in a court. The trying of our faith is like precious gold. Make no mistakes about it. God is out to try your faith to see if you truly believe in your Redeemer. Yeah. And the second you take your eyes off and try to get all handyman with what's going on around you, you're going to fall every single time. Every time. That's why I tell people, the Lord may fix the situation, but even if he doesn't, your peace is going to come regardless of what happens next in the situation. Those men going into the furnace, they didn't say, we're going to have peace if he does. He, they said, he, he probably will save us from the furnace, but even if he doesn't, that's a moment we had to go to come to in our family pertaining to just rent and this cost of living in Naples, my God. We said, we do believe the Lord's going to take care of the rent, but even if he doesn't, we're not deviating from the cross. Amen. Just because, God forbid, we do get put out. We're not going to say, well, the cross doesn't work. Our condition for Calvary and believing in Calvary and obeying from the heart this form of doctrine has nothing to do with what's going on in our lives. I'm going to say it has nothing to do with what's going on in our lives. Our, our sole condition for our faith is, is, is the author and finisher of our faith, who is Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary. That's all we're leaning on. That's all we're looking to. That's all we're focused on. That's the model. Next scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 55. We're going to start at 55. Uh, I was looking here the other day, and boy, there's some bombshells in chapter 15. But 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Again, we're talking about being steadfast. Okay? O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? This is something that you and me can say today. O oh, oh, oh death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Y'all, we've been free. We've been made free. We don't have to, we don't have to struggle uh, uh, in, in the, in the d death experience of sin anymore in our lives. We have victory. We have victory. It says the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. What is the law? Does that just mean you're trying to follow the Jewish uh, commandments? No. That means any manner of your ability, any uh, modus of operandi outside of the doctrine of Calvary, outside of the model of Calvary. That means whether it's self-help, that means whether it's another religion entirely, that means whether it's false doctrine within Christianity, any other model. I, I walked up to people preaching the cross and they're like, well, brother, I'm God. Well, you, you're, you're God too. I'm like, no, I ain't. 
And, but th this, is, this is the model in which they live by. They live by thinking that they've just created their own reality and they wake up and manifest whatever's going to happen next. Sometimes right. I look at their situation and be like, well, you better manifest some other things. But that's besides the point. My point is, they're in the law. Okay? Whether you're in the Jewish law and the, and the commandments and following the commandments to a T, or whether you're just following self-help, you're in some form of law. It's your ability. It's man's attempt to fix himself. It's yeah. man's attempt to become righteous. It's man's attempt to upright himself outside of what God has offered at the cross. Yes. It's, it's another offering. You, you, Any time you deviate from the cross and try to help yourself as a child of God or as a heathen even, you're, you're offering another sacrifice. You're offering something other than the lamb. And we saw how that ended for Cain. God's not pleased with it. He's not accepted. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So guess what? You're operating in this other form, in this, in this other model besides his son and what he's done for you on Calvary. Guess what? The only place the sin nature is broken is at Calvary. That that's, that's the only place you're found crucified. That's why no other doctrine will work. If they're not preaching you the cross, they're not delivering you to the place of death. The Holy Spirit can't, on the back of false doctrine, deliver you unto the place of death because you haven't even heard it to believe it. You have to believe it before he can even take you there. So here's the thing. If you're not hearing death and you being crucified with Christ, guess what? It's still operating in full throttle, in full strength. The sin nature. This is why the law is so dangerous. This is why another model is so, is so damnable to our lives. Because we're operating in a, in a position, in a place where the sin nature cannot be stopped. It cannot be broken. As a matter of fact, Paul says not only does it not stop the sin nature, it'll make it worse. Yeah. He says the law came. Same law we're talking about right here. Again, it's that strength of sin. The law came, sin revived, and I died. The more and more you try to stray away from God's ability and what he's offered at the cross, and you're trying to fight and claw your way to victory through your own strength, the more and more you're going to rile up that sin nature. It's like a power. Yeah. Like every time you deviate from the cross, it's like you're giving the sin nature a power, a boost. Okay? But thanks be to God, which giveth, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And then we're going to we're gonna specify right here exactly what he means by through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because, again, it ain't just Jesus. It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'll show you proof right here in this next scripture. Therefore, my beloved brethren, here's that word. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in what? The work, the work of the Lord. Y'all, yeah. what's the work of the Lord? Calvary. It's his finished work. That's the work of the Lord. It's That's Calvary. Right. For as much as you know that your labor not in the vein of the Lord. Not in vain. Yo, that's the law right there. The law is any attempt to try to fix yourself outside of Calvary. And guess what? Your efforts, your labor is going to be in vain. So that's why we've been called to be steadfast, abounding in Calvary. Because that's the place where our labor actually means something. As a matter of fact, we're just laboring to stay put. That's the strive. The strive of this gospel is to stay in this gospel by maintaining our faith in what he's done on Calvary. Because I've heard this said by Pastor Curtis, as knowledge increases in this last day, so is deception. There's yeah. more and more deception, y'all. And guess what? It ain't just coming out of the, out of, out of the music albums yeah. and out of the concerts. It's coming to the pulpits, man. Yeah. It's coming to the pulpits and droves right now. It's coming to the phone calls. It's coming to the car rides. There's a lot of deception out here trying to pull us away from the cross. And all of us in this room have been called, everybody watching has been called to be steadfast in this truth. This is not just for the, the great titans of the faith. This is, for, this is for everybody. We're all servants. We're all children. We've all been called to hold the course, hold the line. Last scripture of the day, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. And then I may, I may go somewhere else, uh, just depending on how the Lord leads. We'll go 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. I'm not talking about. Get it up there. I'm just, okay. There's the internet. It's, it's a, a wonderful thing. Okay, no worries. I'll go ahead. It says, Yea, therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest you also, being led away with the error of the, of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Wow, nice. Let me, let me ask, who in here still believes in Calvary? Who in here still believes the cross is afforded at all? According to the Bible, if you truly believe that in your heart, you're steadfast. You are part of that steadfastness group. That's right. Everybody in here still showing up to hear cross preaching, still believe in cross preaching. You are steadfast. You still believe the cross is your only answer. But it says, beware. 
See, this thing is a, man, we, I, 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 I listen to it every day. People think this faith is just such a sure thing. Like, you can't, like, it's, you know, it's sort of like a set it and forget it. Man, this faith is so active and intent. Like, it, it only has its one object. Like, if you take, if you stop looking at Calvary, you completely set this faith down. I mean, it, it, it is such a shrive to just maintain a focus, and there is a bombardment by the enemy and by the, and by the darkness of the world to pull you away from that focus. Everything you could think of, even the smallest, most mundane things, is striving to pull you away, Jen away, from his focus on Calvary. We see it happen all the time. Why do you think people used to fellowship with us that are not here anymore? You think they're still looking at Calvary? The Bible says you can't be upheld in this truth unless you're hearing it. Here's why. Something came along the way, no different than in the garden, where the serpent came with his, with his whispering lies, beguiling from them from the simplicity and saying, we don't need the cross for this. It, it, yeah, it's the cross, but, well, this is more important. Uh, let's, let's save that for another day. And, 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 and guess what? If you don't have that steadfastness, if you're not beholding what he's done, you're going to find yourself slipping because you have no strength against the enemy. Amen. On your own, on your own. We have been given power in Christ so long as we're in Christ. But outside of that, y'all, Lucifer is an, like an intellectually advanced being beyond what we can imagine. That's right. I mean, why do you think there's so many false gods out there? A lot of these are just fallen angels. And to the naked human eye, they look like gods because they're so much more advanced than you and I. We stand no chance against Lucifer. We can't outsmart him. Outsmart him. We can't outmit him. He's eons older than any of us could even know. And any of us sitting in this room for sure. But understand this. What he, his campaign, I, I look on, on Facebook and social media, there is all, oh, you know, he's trying to, he's trying to, uh, you know, the people will say, you need to break out of the matrix. Oh, you're in the matrix. You need to break free. <laughs> Bobby knows that. You need to break free from the matrix. Oh, you need to look out for what's in the movies, what's in that. And they think like, you know, Satan's campaign is just to mess our minds. No, he's trying to get our focus off of Calvary. Amen. That's his campaign. That's, 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 if you go look at Satan's military campaign, it's pull the people away from the cross. That's it. If you're heathens, never, never to get to it. If you're Christians, pull them away from it. That's it. Y'all, y'all sitting in this room, none of us truly understand just how lucky we are to have a cross-preaching church nearby and to be called into this truth the way we have been. To have the cross encounter us at some point in our lives and to have an opportunity to stand in this. And man, anyways. Ye, yea, therefore, beloved. Thank you, I appreciate that. Seeing you know these things before, beware, lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. And um, really, that's, that's the core theme here, is, uh, you know, we all have this steadfastness right now, so as long as we're still believing Calvary for, for, for righteousness, for salvation, for sanctification, but it's something that we need, to, we need to be aware of. That word beware means to be aware. Yeah. Like, don't be coy to the fact that, you know, you're, it's, 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 it's a threat. Like, if, if my daughter was just running around the neighborhood with no attendance, you know, I need to be aware that there's people out there that want to kidnap her and take her home. Like, it, it's something that I'm cautious about. I'm, I'm, I'm watching her carefully because of that. This faith is no different. We need to be aware. We need to be keeping our eyes on the swivel. And we need to watch, the Bible says, our faith closely to see what it is that's trying to pull us away. That's, that's right. why the Bible says bring every thought into captivity to the knowledge of Christ. What does that mean? A thought comes into your mind. By the way, if you guys have any feedback or questions, please. I do. Go ahead. I, I, saw, I saw the it lip person. It just hit. Like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. You, right when you said that, the light bulb went off. Because mm -hmm. I know like me and my brother talk about this all the time, and he probably might be catching this himself. But you brought up a great point about be aware, have your head on swivel, mm -hmm. realizing that, hey, there's an enemy out there. Mm -hmm. and. But I think a lot of times in the Christian world, I know because I was that same guy, mm -hmm. we think that it's some cult mm -hmm. from the East or mm -hmm. from the West or mm -hmm. some major, uh, and you said it already, you mm -hmm. said, no, it's in the major pulpits yeah. across the world. But I think that's worth bearing down on mm -hmm. because a lot of Christians think, yeah, there is deception, but that's the Jehovah Witness. Right. Or that's the Mormons. That's the, you know, some big thing that's doing something crazy. And right. that's included. Mm -hmm. There's people that fall from this faith and 
go into some goofy stuff that's like, man, you didn't see that? Yeah, right. But it's that slick stuff mm -hmm. that'll yeah. get you removed right. from being steadfast. Yeah, amen. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. The Bible says the enemy works through subtleties. So, yes. like, if I, if I, I, I don't know if y'all know, but I shoot bows. Like, I shoot bows for, like, hunting and target shooting and stuff like that. And, like, if somebody wanted to throw off my shot off the bullseye, they don't need to, like, like, like T-bone tackle me like a linebacker. All they need is just put, give my arm a slight little nudge. And that slight little movement will knock that arrow five feet off where it was supposed to be. And so the enemy is operating the same way. He's operating through subtleties. It's, it's going to be a lot of, yeah, it's the cross, but. Right. Well, it, it, yeah, it is, it is what Jesus did and, you know. And, I mean, I, I want to share something with, with us younger folks because I know we haven't really been caught up in so much of the false doctrine. You know, we sort of came freshly into this truth. So at, uh, on the opposite side of things, you know, uh, just the darkness of the world, just just the lust of the flesh and yeah. all that the world has to offer. That's, I, I, I'm going to be careful how I say this, but I feel like because we don't have so much of that false doctrine bearing around in our mind, right. and maybe we don't fellowship with many like other Christians, quote unquote, we don't really get as much of that like false doctrine stuff. For us, it'll be like the music. It'll be friends trying to invite us places we know we ought not to be. It's... It's, it's anything that's offering you to just set your faith down for just a little bit so we can do this instead. And that really needs to be our litmus set. Go ahead, Fabio. No, I was just going to say it's moment by moment. It's moment by moment. Amen. amen. And, and, and amen, that's it. So every moment we need to be asking ourselves, and, and you know, I'm not trying to say this in a religious way where like every day you need to be like, oh my God, it's the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross. But you're going to know that it's, it, the Holy Spirit will convict you, and you're going to have an opportunity to check whatever it is that's being offered to you against Calvary. You know? And you need, we need to be asking ourselves, can I operate in this faith, in the blood of Jesus, and still do what it is I'm about to do? Because you know? I've said it before, you know, there, there's people preaching to us that ain't preachers. There's friends and family inviting us out to place, and I'm, I'm talking about me too. I got, man, all my friends ain't perfect. And uh, all my friends ain't marching in this truth. And I got some friends that invite me to do some things I ought not to be doing. Take, uh, invite me to some places I ought not to be going. And I, at that point, I have to bring that thought into captivity and acknowledge that, hey, I can't operate in this faith and go do what I'm about to go do with them. I can't. It's not possible. So that's that sort of just being aware and just, you know, man, just monitoring this faith. This, it's, we're, we're keepers, man. What, what did you say about keep the garden? The Bible, uh, God instructed Adam and Eve to keep the garden. And uh, yeah. then it goes forth in the scripture to say, keep your heart with all due diligence. And I'm going to wrap up with this. I don't want to ramble on too long. But Can I add something Please before go ahead. you do to yeah. keep the garden? Yeah. To your point about the world mm -hmm. pulling us and stuff. Uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 10, she put it up there. Okay. It's, uh, Demas was one who walked with Paul. He was Paul's right hand man. Mm -hmm. And he said, for Demas has forsaken me, which means he left him, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, uh, Crescens, to Galatia, Titus, unto down, whatever. But the point is, uh, Demas was his close confidant, mm -hmm. working in the faith, and he left him because he fell back in love with the world. I and I think that's more reality to if you're not so much hook, line, and sinker by doctrines here, right. you, you could just fall back in love with what's going on in the world. Right. Amen. Yeah. I, I can speak personally to that in my own testimony. Um, you know, before I came to this message, I was I was big into, you know, doing music. And I may still do it in the future, but it was definitely like my focus in life. It was my passion. And uh, I still sometimes I feel the, the heartstrings pull for like fame and like just people right. loving on me and just pride, yeah, the pride of life and just a bunch of people like, you know, ah, 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 on and on me. Like I have songs with over a hundred thousand listens and people DMing me every day, like, bro, you inspire me, bro, this, that. And it's like, there's a part of my flesh and I, I recognize what it is. Praise the Lord. There's a part of my flesh that has a, a, a like a bent to that. You know, it's like, it desires that, that, you know, that recognition and it's pride, huh? Ego. It's my ego. Exactly. And so, that's, I mean, that's it right there. And it's at that point that I have to decide, do I love that? Do I love, you know, people practically worshiping me for the music I create for them? And, and you know, uh, being people's solution to their problems instead of Calvary through my music? Or do I love the cross more? You know, and, uh, you know, the Bible says no man can serve two masters. You know, and this, that's where we got to just take scripture for what it is. You can't serve the cross and another master at the same time. You have to make a choice. 
And that's where it's binary, man. You can't have 75% of your heart into this. It has to be 100% in or 100% out. And so, praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor, do you have anything to add before I kind of close? Or? Okay. Yeah, we're just going to close with that one scripture. It says, you know, keep your heart with all due diligence. And really, this topic of steadfastness and, and holding to Calvary is how we keep our heart. You know, uh, out of the heart becomes, uh, what does it say? The, the, out of the heart? Oh, man. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of Perfect. life. It's keep your heart with all, all due diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, issues means outgoings. Like the fruits of your life come out of your heart. Whatever we see in your life is a product of what comes out of your heart. So... The Bible says, keep your heart. She's going to pull a scripture up here real quickly. Let's pull the right scripture. <laughs> I said 423, she put 14. It sounds like it. Oh my gosh. Four. We'll, we'll get there. There it is. Okay, perfect. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Issues doesn't mean like bad things. Here it's actually written as outgoings, like the products, the symptoms of life. Like, it, like the, the things that are happening in your life are coming out of your heart. That's why the Bible says to keep our heart with all due diligence. But how do we do that? We stay steadfast. We, we hold on to this truth. We don't deviate from it. We, we're aware of the things that challenge it, and we defend this faith, and we contend for it. And this is a personal thing. I can't do this for Daniela. Daniela can't do this for me. This is something that is, sometimes there ain't going to be nobody else in the room, and I'm going to have to contend for this faith. I'm going to have to defend my heart and keep my heart with all due diligence by deciding if I'm still going to hold on to Calvary, if I'm going to go set it down for 10 minutes. You had a question, brother? Yes. Uh, we're talking about the heart. Mm -hmm. And we go back to Genesis chapter 6. One of the reasons why God destroyed the world was because the heart of man wow. was continually evil. Amen. You know, yeah, and, talk about it, boy. Yeah, and then in, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, mm -hmm. look what it says. Look what it says. Um, Wherefore, at the Holy Ghost said it today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not mm -hmm. your hearts. Oh, amen. I'll be doing you know? that someday. <laughs> so I leave it right there. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's interesting he brings up harden not your hearts because the Bible also says that these people, their love is waxed gross. And when you look up that word waxed gross, it means like their heart is thickened. And it's got like a bunch of callous on it. Mm -hmm. And this is why there's so much hatred in the world. There's so much racism. There's so much ambiguity, fighting, gossiping, like judgment. It's just the world is just inherently evil. And it's because the love of God has waxed gross in our hearts. Like there's no, there, we don't have any love anymore. And the only way to restore that love and to be experiencing that and to share that with the world. You know, people, uh, and, and you know, I hear Pastor say, and I kind of bear witness with this. His heart is with anybody that wants to help the community and help people. But you have these people that just wake up and you, what do you ask them? Like, oh, my passion likes to love people. <laughs> the heart here's, the, is here's the thing. Sinful. Here's the thing. The no the man world. has a, a the, the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. Yes. That's you right. Know? That and, was uh, the reference to keep the garden. Yeah, amen. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So that's, that we're called, we're keepers of our own heart, y'all. And the way we keep it is literally, I don't know how else to say it. It's as simple as continuing in this faith. But as simple as it is, all y'all know in here, it's one of the most challenging, it's probably the most challenging thing of your own life. Standing in this faith. faith. Man, I'm telling y'all, man, we went through some situations, boy. And oh boy, I'd be a liar if I said it was easy to just hold to Calvary. I'd be a liar if I said I looked to Calvary in every one of those moments. Because I didn't, man. And uh, man, that's, that's what it is. He's trying us every moment. And if we would just stay put here, if we would just stay put at the cross, I'm telling y'all from my own testimony, and I know Pastor get up here, he'll probably start tearing up, talking about what, what the Lord's done for him. The Lord will work, man. Like, man, I know I don't sound super eloquent right now or anything like that, but it, it just it just works. I don't know how to tell y'all, like, it just works. Like, I've seen it in my wife's life and just how the Lord's brought her out of, like, crippling anxiety. I'm talking about I had to drive across the city to go see her because she was shaking and she couldn't, like, handle herself. And now you ask her, anxiety's not a thing. Amen. And, and she ain't take no pills. She didn't read no book. She didn't know, you know, it was, certainly wasn't because I was helping her or anything like that. Man, she was anything. I'm, I'm making her anxiety worse, all the things I <laughs> Nonetheless, the Lord delivered her through this message. Come on now. And, and, and he was always ready to deliver her through this message as, as, at the moment she was ready to believe it. 
you know, and she went through the gauntlet, you know, she went through all the self-help and therapists and the pills and the that and the YouTube videos. And it was only when this message came across and she discovered that the cross truly afforded it all for her and dealt with her anxiety, was she was she truly set free yeah. and liberated from it. Praise so, the Lord. amen. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say today, y'all, is just keep your hearts and, uh, you know, if you're holding on to this truth, uh, you know, keep marching. And if you found that you maybe you deviated because that happens too, you know, it, it's always right there, right behind you. I've always said it, you know. You can march 10 miles away from this truth, 100 miles away, and Calvary's going to be right behind you. You don't got to go 100 miles back. You just need to turn around because he's always right there with you, and he's He's ready for you to accept this truth with open arms. And, you know, if that's you and you straight away, you're the prodigal son. And when the prodigal son came back, even after he left his dad and said, I'll take my money and go, right. man, he had a party waiting for him. Mm -hmm. So the Lord rejoices more for the one lost sheep than the 99 that are already there. But uh, everybody bow your heads in prayers with all eyes closed. We're just going to do a, you know, seated altar call here. Father, we thank you for this message of steadfastness, Lord. We thank you for showing us the place that you called us all, Lord, the foot of the cross, Lord, at the cross where the blood was shed, Lord. The blood was shed for all of us and all of our issues and situations in our life. Not only our salvation, but our working in our daily lives, Lord. You working in our hearts and changing us and making us conformable unto death, Lord. We see it. We see our desperate need for it moment to moment, Lord. Every Amen. nanosecond of our lives, Lord, looking to the blood, Lord. Lord, we ask that as we continue to march in this truth and believe you in Calvary, we ask that, Lord, you just continue to enrich our souls and spirits yes, with this treasure of wisdom, Lord, this treasure of knowledge that you've laid up in the good hope of the gospel, Lord. Yes, Jesus Lord. Christ and him crucified, Lord. Let it liberate us and make us free, Lord, in every situation in our lives, Lord. Let us start to build our own testimonies that we can share Amen. for the furtherance of the gospel, Lord. Let us see the cross in ways we've never seen it before, Lord. Let us let you access areas of our life that we've never let you access before, Lord, simply by yielding to the blood of Jesus Amen. and understanding that you have truly given us all things pertaining to life and godliness, Lord. You said in your word, Lord, that you spared not your own son, so how should you not with him also freely give us all things, Lord? That means you haven't left one corner of our lives untouched, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever, whatever that is for those in the pew and even me in the pulpit, Lord, yes, those Lord. areas where maybe we haven't even thought of you, Lord, maybe we haven't even acknowledged your ability to work in that area, Lord, we hand it over to you right now, Lord. We trust in the blood of Jesus, Lord, and we're holding on to those nail-scarred hands yes. as our only answer and our only provision vision. If you're in this room and you're hearing the sound of my voice yes, and, Lord. you know, uh, whether you've strayed away from this and, and you want to come back to it and you want to oh, continue Lord. to march in this truth and, and come back to that line and hold the line, or if you find yourself in your heart standing right there and you truly do believe the cross is afforded at all and that's your only answer and you want to continue marching there, just with all eyes closed and all heads yes, bowed, Lord. I'd ask you to just raise your hand right now. Oh, raise your hand. And the Lord sees the hands. I don't need to see the hands. The Lord sees the hands. And uh, Father, for those of us that raised our hands in this room, Lord, we thank you for those, Lord. We thank you for those that are wanting to march forward in this truth, that are wanting to march forward in Calvary, Lord, that want to see Calvary in a greater light. Lord, we ask that you just continue to encourage them in this truth. Use those in this body, Lord, to love on them. Let them see the love of God through those in this ministry, Lord. Just let the love of God be shed abroad in our hearts. And let us just fellowship with one another, Lord, and, and be true, you know, just lovers on each other, Lord. Because the Bible says, the world will see that you are my children by the love that we have for one another, Lord. But we understand yes, that we Lord. can't have that love unless we're looking to the place where we've been loved, Lord. So we ask you just grow this ministry closer, Lord. Yes. We grow, You grow this congregation and just tighten the bonds, Lord. Thank Restore you. relationships that have been damaged, Lord. Uh, heal the, 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 the men's, Lord, and the heart, Lord. Help people have forgiveness and Cast away all fear or resentment yes, in the hearts, Lord, all by Calvary, Lord, all by every one of us yes. looking to those nail-scarred hands, Lord. And we're, we're believing you, Lord. We're believing you in this ministry, in this congregation, but above yes. all things in our own personal lives, Lord, because this is a personal walk, Lord. We ask that you just continue to, to keep us, Lord. Keep us as you promised in your word, Lord, as we continue yes. looking to what you've given us, Lord. And we thank you for that holy sacrifice. We thank you for providing yourself a lamb, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. 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 Give God a give God a hand and give a hand too. Amen. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent word. Thank you. Really steadfast. I mean, wow. Amen. Just give me three minutes, guys, and I'm glad we are shut down because we can get packed up very quick too before and the people that work it can get out. Can I, I wanted to Can I come up there with you when you're when you announce uh, Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. absolutely. Okay.
Okay. So I just wanted to finish in the prayer too. If you're watching by social media and you have, come on up here, Jim. If you have a need for prayer, um, I want you to, we're going to give you a couple minutes to, um, to basically let it be known. And uh, give me that cue. Yeah. That we'll share this night. Let this song minister to you. It's about serving God with your whole heart. And if you, that same altar call that he gave, if you also have a need for physical healing, we're going to pray for Casey too. Baby and my sister and I, and I was going to ask you that uh, how the babies go to are they sitting at home? No, okay, put your hand. Okay, pray to God, pray to God. I'm going to 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 pray to Terrible. Because we want to get together at my daughter's house over at uh, Palm Beach, practicing my new doggy. Yeah. And so hopefully they're going to be healed by the Lord. Stretch your hands out toward our brother. And um, COVID, y'all know Jesus is greater than COVID. And COVID also, the name of things will try to scare you. But you know, the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That's right. That, that's basically because his name is greater than the name of COVID, than the name of sugar diabetes, whatever you do. And Father, right now, Lord, we send the word to heal him, Father. Let not that you we get glory, Lord, but that you do. Father, the work that Christ did on the cross, Lord, healing is the children's bread today. And Father, you did a work, hallelujah. By your stripes, we were healed, Father. Let that healing Go, hallelujah, to that family right now. Hallelujah. Lord, let the cross come out in the in the long run that they'll see that Amen. Jesus Christ touched me, Lord God. Let it be a foundational uh, a seed sown there. Somehow, Lord, make it happen, Father God. And give my brother and his household peace, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Give him peace as he travels back and forth with the children, Lord. Hallelujah, being a blessing, Lord. Give him the word of righteousness and the word of healing to, to even be the instrument that you use in this situation. Thank you, Father, we thank you for Sister Casey, Lord. We thank you for Isla. We thank you for the baby in the womb, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that, that there be nothing that will hinder and touch them, Lord God, that they are protected, Lord, by the blood of Jesus, Lord. And, Father, we thank you for our sister, hallelujah, Lord, that her hand right now, Lord God, you'll bring healing so fast to that, Lord God. Even though, Father, it's already been started, we ask you to speed it up, Lord God. Let there be no complications, Lord. Bless That's Father, right. Lord. Glory yeah, to the two God. together. Give them a special kick, a kindle them to get, Lord, Lord, in a deep for way yes, through this Hallelujah, message and through this Lord. truth, Lord, as they set their hearts afflict to what you're doing and saying, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Father God. And Father, we thank you for anybody on social media that might have a need right now, Lord. My sister Trace, I didn't tell y'all real quick, she just got in an accident today. She's the same one that was in a coma. God took her out of a coma. She's the same one that has, like, She's just really sick, and she just got out of the hospital. Well, today she's back in the hospital. She she took out a whole railroad tie, uh, a whole railroad thing, crossing, and she could have died, but there was grace there. Somebody pulled her out. Her sugar went down to 15, and she couldn't talk, and, but now she's talking. I want to ask you guys, and if you're by social media, if you know how to pray, pray for my sister, Trace. She, the Lord keeps saving her, but there's also something the devil was trying to, but we know the devil's alive. Amen. Amen. And That's we right. ask the Lord, Lord to, to just bring her and continue to protect her, Lord, and bring her back to the foot of the cross like she wants, like she knows she needs to be. Amen. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring up my sister, Lord. This happened today. Lord, you knew we would be praying right now. 
Yes, and Father, we ask you, Lord, to do a creative work, Lord, whatever the situation Lord. is. Thank Father God, Lord. whatever you've got to do, Lord, you created her. Yes, yes, you Lord. already brought her out of a coma and amazed men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you to heal her, Lord, but not just heal her, Lord. Reveal your cross to her in a deeper Thank way, Jesus. Father God. Hallelujah. Break the spirit of repentance, Lord. Hallelujah. Curve all the, the, the attitude, Lord, and everything that, that's, that, that hinders her from being with you wholeheartedly, 100%, Lord. You, Lord. Take it out of the way, Lord. Do what you got to do Thank in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord. And we give you the praise. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's Saturday. Yeah, go ahead and tell us about Saturday. Yeah, so Saturday, uh, the day before Sunday service, which we are still doing a Sunday service. Right here, uh, back there. Okay, so we, we are, are going to be in our normal spot on Sunday. Perfect. So yeah, we're going to have a Christmas Eve service uh, by Saturday. Uh, I believe we're going to do 2 to 6. I believe that's the preferred window by some of the folks I've been talking to. Uh, it gives us a chance to okay, catch for Saturday. Traffic. Okay. Yeah. For Saturday, we're going to do 2 to 6 p.m. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it's the very first time the ministry has done it, but it'll definitely be my first time. We're going to be street preaching. So we're going to have some speakers out there. We're going to go to the corner of Pine Ridge and Airport. And I think the first time would have been repent Southwest. That's right. That's right. That's way better than what we're doing. But praise the Lord, it's all still Calvary. So, but no, nah, it, it's the first time we went to a street corner. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So we're going out to a street corner, just like you see in the YouTube videos, and uh, we're just going to preach the gospel to whoever has ears to hear. That's obviously going to be a super busy intersection because all the Christmas shopping and rush hour traffic that day. Uh, so it's been something that the Lord's put on my heart for a couple months, and I'm excited, man. I know Margie's going to be there. I hope, you know, Fabi and your wife, you guys can be there. But uh, we're, we're getting together as a ministry. We're going to have, obviously, coolers out there with some nice ice-cold drinks. Uh, probably, I'm thinking, some pub subs or something to keep everybody well-fed. And we're just going to go out there and preach the gospel, man. And hopefully, uh, Lord willing, uh, and Lord, this is sort of a prayer we'll be praying to you throughout the days. So use this as an opportunity to grow our ministry, I mean. We, we could really, uh, you know, we would really appreciate, you know, some more folks hearing this truth. I mean, we had it our way, the whole world would be hearing it, right? Um, and also That's just right. more help, man, you know, just more help in the ministry. And, you know, it takes, a, it takes a lot of cogs to make this whole wheel turn. So, you know, Lord, we're asking that it, it be an opportunity to grow this ministry, but most importantly... Get the gospel out to the locals because that's what Pastor fell on his heart when he first started this ministry was to get the message of the cross to 239 here in Southwest Florida. So praise the Lord. We're excited. If you guys want to be a part of that, uh, you guys will hear me call you anyways. And I'm going to poke you forward and see what you guys are thinking. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be Saturday, 2 p.m., the corner of Pine Ridge and Airport Pullman Road. And we'll get you guys more details as it comes. Amen. And having said that, everybody say amen. 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 You are dismissed. Woo!